Hi, Hi, and welcome to Matrix Moments. Avneesh, very excited to do this again with you. Today's episode is on a hotly discussed topic internally, founder market fit. I want to first ask you, we just did an episode, actually you just did an episode with Anurag where we were talking about experienced founders and how building in domain was a critical part of the journey uh, uh, of being an experienced founder. How is this new term founder market fit any different? Is it any different from the previously discussed concept of building in domain? So first of all, great to be back here and uh, thank you Rajinder. You know, the before we get into the details of all this, I think uh, I have been now doing this 16 years, sadly you have also been doing it 10 plus years. Uh, I'll tell you the meaning investing. And we have always said that first of all, we were all believers in the future and the future took forever to show up. Fortunately, in the last three years, it seems like the future showed up faster than we expected it to and exceeded our expectations, which, was, which has been lovely. One of the consistent themes in this, in this grind, I would call it, has been that the founder quality, which we have discussed many times, has kept on improving from cycle to cycle, right? And then the latest one became, you know, we were, we were dialed into these first time founders who have, by the way, we'll talk about it later, created the largest companies in the world and in India, whether it's Ola, Razorpay, our business, so on and so forth, right? Um, in our portfolio and a bunch outside. Then we saw when these companies were becoming large, people were starting to come out of them and start new businesses. And I remember you flagged this, not only from these kind of companies, but in general, more experienced founders uh, coming out. So then we had an episode on that and we, you know, we are uh, pretty well indexed uh, on that flywheel uh, for our investing. When you look at the global literature in venture capital, actually they talk a lot about founder market fit and I've never heard it spoken about in India. Maybe once or twice here or there from a, from a peer, right? So that is something that has now is a realization that has dawned on us internally that the ecosystem is evolving. Our thinking needs to keep evolving. We have gone from first time founders, we love them, we all love them, we'll continue to invest. Experienced founders, we love them. Now you have experienced founders who may not necessarily mean meet the definitions that we have laid out, right? One of those is domain. Is working in domain a founder market fit? Absolutely, it's the easiest form of founder market fit. But it doesn't apply whether it's experienced or first time or we'll, we'll use experienced, sorry, first time and new and inexperienced in a you know, kind, kind of uh, similar way. It doesn't matter if somebody is experienced by definition, what are they experienced in? Domain. In some domain. So if they come out and work in that domain, I would, I would think they have found a market fit. But we'll come to that. I think yeah. there's a nuance there. But there can be people who are inexperienced, and we'll discuss again some of the largest companies in the world, where if you just apply domain, because they don't have experience in a domain, you would say, do they have, do they not have found a market? But that's where the nuance starts building. So I actually believe it's an evolution in our thinking. It is an evolution to keep pace with what we are seeing in the market. Uh, but it is something that's been around globally for a long period of time. So Avi, I agree with you. I think the uh, assertion that founders building outside of domain can also build very, very large companies is clearly true and there's multiple examples out there. But how should one think of it? Like if one is an experienced founder building in domain versus building out of domain, yeah. ultimately you're talking about founder market fit. So how should one, yeah. how should one think about so it? So I think for the rest of this discussion, let's, let's separate experienced and, and inexperienced founders from founder market fit. This point applies irrespective. It applies to all entrepreneurs. Now, you know, I often think of myself, whether for better or for worse, more as a founder than as a VC. So if I were to go out again and start, and sometimes for me, the clarity of giving any advice comes from what would I do in that situation, right? And I would absolutely not take domain risk. I would work in the domain that I know well. Maybe marketplaces would lend itself, maybe on the margin fintech, but there I would be out of my uh, domain. Consumer would probably be in domain. Now why? We have discussed before that startups is hard. We all know that. Most of them are destined to fail. Yep. If you're starting up again and you're not 
thoughtfully figuring out how to stack odds in your favor to win disproportionately, I think you're probably giving up an, an opportunity to do so. So domain to me is one of them. Why is domain relevant? When you're going through a startup journey, and we have discussed this in, in the Anurag you know, uh, journey episode, there are a bunch of other experience founder things you can build and all quickly, all of that. Let's keep that aside. Ultimately, you have to have the best thought around how do I get to where the product market fit I am uh, looking for. If everything goes per plan, great. When things don't go per plan, why do they not go per plan? Because you have some unknown has shown up that you didn't know. Well, if you're in your domain, likely your unknown box is very small, right? So to me, that just becomes a very easy answer. Um, but what we discussed in the previous uh, question, we have to also evolve. So to me, easy, lazy answer is absolutely domain. I would take the easy, lazy answer. But I think there is more nuance beyond that. And that then applies to new and inexperienced founders also because they don't have experience which can be an asset, not a liability. Uh, so we'll come to that. No, I think that's a good point because I was just reflecting and you know, this isn't something I'd typed up earlier, but very often companies pivot. And there are so many examples out there where a founder, when they generally pivot the business, will also pivot within the same domain. Like if you look at say, Mcoach to Inmobi or Zomato from restaurant discovery to food delivery, yeah. you generally are pivoting within domain to an adjacency and finding product market fit you generally stack odds in your favor if you're building yeah. in the same domain. And which will come to part of what we'll cover next time uh, in one of these questions, but I think it's important to call it out here. If you are outside in, which by the way will become one criteria for founder market fit, and you are customer obsessed, which will become the second criteria for product market fit. I mean, what does Dipinder signify? I mean, he is one of those guys, right? So if you are that, then from those customers, you may discover some other pain point of that customer, which you are able to solve better, right? So yeah. I think it does become. So um, let me ask the question another way then, which is, it sounds like the answer for you is very clear, that you'd always build in domain. Why should that not be the default answer for every founder out there? Yeah. No, so, so I think before we get there, we should make sure, uh, Saloni, we include this chart or maybe we can flash this, but the net net is this is a chart of company success uh, percentage with a big exit, depending on the founder's background, how, how, much, how many companies have they started. Exactly. And I'll just give two numbers or maybe three. Previous companies founded, founded zero, big exit, percentage with exit 5%, percentage with big exit 0.5%. Let's take Previous companies founded three, percentage with exit double, which is about 10 and a half, percentage with big exit 5x, about two and a half. Interestingly, percent, if more than four companies were uh, founded, the big exit goes back down and I'll give a nuance around this. So first of all, odds are going up, which is what we said. But, and I, had, I was having this debate with an experienced founder in the US, a serial entrepreneur, made a lot of money, billionaire, uh, onto his fourth venture, out of domain. And I was giving him this gyan about domain and all of that. And he turned around and said, but don't you see, can't, I can give you a counter argument. If I have been working in the same domain, and none of them, and he's very smart, and he has all the other followership, this, that. None of them have become 50, 100 million dollar companies, maybe the domain has capped outcomes, yeah. right? And it really hit me, right? Uh, and I think interestingly in this four plus data, you're seeing that the big exit is actually even smaller. So maybe somebody is just, you know, kind of punting uh, with base hits uh, time to time. So why would they be out of domain? Capped out outcomes. Yep. Uh, they, we spoke about knowns and unknowns before. They know enough to know that the opportunity doesn't exist. In fact, the people starting in that domain may be gullible because they may be operating in an unknown box where this person is operating in a known box. Fatigued, not intellectually stimulated. A lot of us are looking for self-actualization self at some stage. So what, what is it that is driving you? Uh, you made this point in the context of Zomato, spotted a related problem. And that related problem may be in a different domain but for the same customer. So, which we'll come back to in terms of founder market fit. 
so I think net net it is about stacking odds in in favor um, and I do think it can override domain but I think the bar goes up the bar really goes up and I think the person should be thinking that okay I am operating out of domain but I'm going to be competing with somebody who's experienced in that domain which will come with all the check boxes and then even if I'm first mover will they get past me so I just think the level of introspection and questioning uh, should go up I guess uh, you know we've done a podcast on this and product market fit as a topic is you know well discussed well understood isn't founder market fit just a little too cute like why VCs, a company, are, VCs are very cute. <laughs> they, they always try to like sound smart, right? At the end of the day, companies and startups are you know seeking product market fit. They're yeah. not like seeking so founder market fit. So before we go there, so so far we have discussed about this domain, non-domain, founder market fit. Like where does it sit for you? No, so for me it's actually very clear. Uh, the reason why founder market fit resonates well with me is because ultimately it comes down to. Uh, what is the founder's calling? What is the founder's purpose, mission? Uh, and honestly, their personality also ties into the business that they're building. And to take some examples from, you know, that I have seen, you know, uh, if I look at, say, off business, uh, Ashish was not building in domain. But yeah. if I think about his personality, his Ruchis, you know, Bhuvans, uh, Nitin, Vasant, all of them, you know, many of them came from ITC in their early years yeah. and so they understood manufacturing but they didn't really have enough domain expertise in that but fundamentally Ashish is just a very very commercial person like yeah. he is very very uh, uh, commercially minded on business and business model innovation and where to make money yeah. and so it, it just seems natural that he would succeed in B2B commerce because ultimately it's a business which is a business built on scale but a business where a lot of innovation is required yeah. to find the margin in the and the profit pools in the business. Yeah. And so, if instead, if I were to imagine him as a D2C entrepreneur, where he's responsible to, you know, innovate and create a category. And where, brand. And branding and marketing. Honestly, I just can't picture him. Well, he'll be listening to this so, and he'll be Ashish calling apologies. you. <laughs> no, so actually, let's follow that train of thought. We were going to have these examples later, but let's just follow that train of thought, right? So, uh, if you look at the largest companies, Actually, let's maybe come back to it. Uh, let's first define the framework and then we'll come back to it. Sure. So, yes. Yeah, so okay, so coming back to this product market. So, to your point, you're saying it does uh, resonate. And I think to that point, coming back to the question, is FMF too cute or is it, uh, and how is it different from product market fit? Ashish didn't start in the business he's doing now. He actually tried to start in domain. Correct. He was going to do procurement for healthcare yeah. and healthcare is his domain and uh, very quickly he iterated because he was extremely outsider, right? So my simple question is, what happens if there's no PMF? Who's still there? The founder. Founder That's is still simple. there. Yeah. So I think products come and go. Founders uh, remain. Vision, vision of the first product also comes from the founder. So. To me, a founder with FMF, now this is going to sound like a lot of uh, acronyms, but a sound founder with FMF will get PMF and they will figure out the GTM to get to the PMF, right? Because they are just obsessed. They are constantly iterating and churning until they hit uh, that, that nail on the head. And none of the, I mean, we have done this episode, we should link it, you know, the hack job. There are so many things that go into building uh, a business and until unless you are obsessed about building that business which will de define um, I don't think and that's FMF and I think everything else is is an outcome of that yeah no I know you're very uh, uh, structured in your analysis on uh, uh, you know, how to define these things. I think it's seeming like an underhanded compliment <laughs> and a disguised insult to me. <laughs> but, Not even disguised. <laughs> but uh, let's define founder market fit. For you, like as I, I laid out, you know, what I but thought. Exactly I, I, what you laid out. Exactly what you, so if I had to put it in one sentence, it would be life's calling. How do you get there? There are lots of frameworks, right? So we have pause on matrix moments, just passion, opportunity, skill set. 
Uh, by the way, this uh, Chris Dixon made this statement when he was being quizzed about crypto and to his credit, he is still a believer and he's a maxi and he's still even in this market, which is great. He did make a statement that what the smartest people do on weekends is what the rest of us will do in the next decade, right? To me, founder market fit is what is that obsession for you that if you had all the money in the world, what would you do? And I'm assuming this is, and of course, some people would retire and take a holiday. That's also fine. There is no founder market fit for you. Maybe open a beach shack, right? Uh, and that's fine. Yeah, so there are a lot of people who, if you were to tell them that, they will say, I would go and do something this, right? For example, after I sold Bazi, I asked myself this question. And one of the plans uh, possible was that I would go and teach or I would set up an educational institution. Something, you know, uh, one of the guys I uh, get inspired by Ashish Dhawan, what he's done with Ashoka University, right? So I do think that that is the overarching de uh, definition. Now, what are the elements? If we were to actually put it in a framework, domain, if you are, and if you are inexperienced and you are new, let's say you are young, but there is a domain you're obsessed by. I'll tell you one place where I saw a amazing pattern. And I think the FMM, FMF was clear. When we were looking at space tech, all the founders, we must have had 20 to 30 companies, all the founders shared the following background. Parents were scientists, most likely. Uh, ISRO, DRDO, IISC, IIT Chennai, very, and 30, 40, 50 percent had done aerospace. That's FMF, even if there's no experience in the domain, because there's an obsession with the domain. And to me, this obsession uh, word is, is very important. Second, there is, a, there is a potential pitfall with that, that you can end up becoming, coming up with solutions looking for problems. You're inside out. So therefore, being outside in. Have you experienced a problem in that domain? Do you have a 10x solve for that problem, right? Uh, these things become very important. Customer empathy, whoever your customer is, are you just obsessed about that customer? Even potentially, and this is where the missionary founders thing comes in. I think if you are operating outside a quote unquote domain, that missionary zeal has to be something we have seen with Shashank, for example, in Practo, right? Uh, so I think those would become the elements. And then you as a founder have to step back and say, what is my unfair sustainable advantage to win? Because you have to assume that your competition will be somebody who is going to come within the domain, who will know a little bit better about the market, and then can you still win? Yeah. So, yeah. you know, you should talk about, you had sent me some questions that a founder should ask himself or herself. Yeah, yeah, no, so I think the questions are actually uh, uh, instructive. I think. Uh, one question uh, that, that I read which was very helpful was, uh, you know, why are you the person to solve this or why are you the team sh that should, you know, go out and build this? Because it connects back to the, you know, partly to the purpose, partly to the insight, partly to, you know, what people learn. Uh, another thing that matters a lot, especially when it relates to, you know, outside in, uh, is uh, what insights do you have from your customers or, you know, do you have the right network to be able to succeed in this, this business? This network thing actually really hit me. That do you know your customers better? Do you know it's all about being outside in, right? Yeah. Are you going to get the best input, and do you have the best access to experts to win? Yeah. Right? For example, you know one of the companies uh, you know you and Rajat are involved in, Go Quick. Uh, I think Chirag, honestly, you can argue he was at the intersection of the domain because he was. In a it D2C was company. It was an experiential problem. Yeah, mm. it was an experiential problem. And yeah. frankly, you know, he wasn't built, he wasn't a fintech entrepreneur before, but when it comes to e-commerce enablement and, and you know, D2C, fin yeah. fintech, you know, clearly he had the empathy, he had the insight, uniquely placed to solve it, uh, had the network. So all yeah. of that, check, check, check. So I think, you know, great, great set of questions. And then I think going back to the point that you made on, you know, probability of success, the reality is whether it's competition, whether it's product market fit, you know, there are going to be enough pitfalls. And so how much conviction do you really, really have yeah. uh, in going out and building this? Yeah. Uh, and again, to your point, you know, 
are you as a founder more excited by the solution that you've figured out or are you more excited by the problem? And or the process. I'll tell you my, and I think your FMF and venture capital, uh, it took us forever. It took the whole industry forever. But I mean, the reality is we get branded as, branded as founders first, but we actually live that not because it helps us in the business, it does, but because we enjoy it. That is our FMF. Our FMF is we really enjoy interacting with smart founders. And of course, our job is to make sure we get into business with the best ones. But they really align because we enjoy spending time. We are obsessed about it. Right? Yeah. Let's go over some examples just to make it come alive for, you know, you know, folks out there. I yeah. think the, 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 the ones where, you know, founders building in domain, easy. those are easy. Uh, and actually, let's just get discuss those, right, even within our portfolio. One card, Jupiter, Deserve, Rocket Lane, Super Ops. Uh, and they are, in most cases, they've gotten off to a, a very fast start. And I'm missing quite a few, quite a few yeah, uh, yeah. over there. Uh, so that is easy. But if you look at Razorpay and Ola, from this lens of FMF, it was outstanding. I mean, Ola, the story is well known. Olatrips.com. Uh, you know, Commonwealth Games, realizing can't get a taxi, deeply experiential and looking at the travel domain. And by the way, also not known as Bhavesh and his wife, Raj used to be like avid travelers, right? And hikers and all that. And, you know, manned the call center, drove cabs, Correct. everything. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, so, but that was the obsession and the passion. Razor Pay, the guys were entrepreneurs in IIT Rurki. I think I'm the institute, right? Correct. Um, hackers, you know, uh, and Something, by the way, I had also experienced because of Bazi, these credit card payment failure rates. The level of depth and obsession. And you know, it was our, in the non-Zoom days, our first remote investment. We made the investment over Skype, thank God. Um, I think they were deeply experienced. They had FMF, yeah. even without. And I think Shashank of Practo has FMF, right? Actually, Manish of MSwipe, doctor yeah. working in FinTech, because he couldn't get payments because of his alcohol business. Uh, so FMF, these guys had. So actually, it's very instructive to see that they have been uh, very successful. But let me ask you about the global well-known names. Apple, originally started by Jobs and Wozniak. What, what FMF, like completely inexperienced, started in the garage? What was Jobs known for? And what is Apple known for? Uh... I guess when he started the company, he was pretty early in his career. I don't remember if he had a job before that. No. Uh, and he hadn't even graduated. Right. But he was incredibly l creative, left brain. So I guess product design. Design, yeah. Uh, that he was taking calligraphy classes and he said, you know, this font is shit and let me get it yeah. changed. And because he didn't have the technology domain, he partnered with the tech guy, which was Boss, right? Correct. Who could build the hardware. Right. So, may not look like FMF, but clear FMF. Jobs is imprinted everywhere over, over Apple, right? Amazon, I mean, bookstore uh, on the internet, no FMF. Goldman Sachs banker or D. Shaw banker. D. I Shaw, um, I guess like incredibly competitive, analytical. Uh, I guess we are. What is Amazon known for? Ruthless on like execution, cost, execution fair cost. Uh, but that uh, one wouldn't have known at that time. What are, I mean, customer obsession? Customer obsession, yeah, of course. Yeah. So it came from him. It, this is the thinnest of the FMF one would see, but it is one of the things we spoke about. Are you obsessed about those customers? This guy used to sit, he empowered the front uh, call center people to just return money and stuff like that. So I think customer obsession, but would be the least on the on the FMF. He was a banker. I took inspiration and therefore came and started. Uh, you know, an outcome was much lower. Microsoft, Google, easy M FMF. Uh, Google in particular, they were PhD, PhD researchers PhD. on on better search technologies. Yeah. Right? So, so I think I think that this gives me a better, frankly, a, a, my, uh, tunes my own mind better on how to think about some of these founders. Yeah. No, and uh, I guess for founders, uh, you know, who are thinking of building uh, and figuring out which idea to go after, uh, at some level you can always delude yourself into believing that, you know, the idea that you're kind of zeroed in on, you have 
found a market fit for yeah. because at a point in time you're obsessed by it and yeah. you know, so on and so forth. You know, some of yeah. these things we've discussed, you can clearly delude yourself into believing it. So how should one pick? Like, let's say if someone is like thinking through a couple of ideas, like what should they, what should they really zero in on? So I would say again, let's separate uh, new founders and experienced founders. New founders, we have discussed the whole framework. Um, but they should really, really think deeper about when I started, I didn't really have FMF. Um, I was actually chasing money. Uh, today, I think if I were to start in a deeper market with that outcome, I would probably lose because somebody would be there with a better FMF, right? So I think the it should not, often I hear from the younger guys, this is what I'm going to do and then this is what I really want to do, which is later. Don't be in that situation. Do what you want to do later now. Uh, that's FMF, right? So all the criteria we gave, experiential problem, customer obsession, outside in, have you, is this something that you actually read about in your free time, right? Is this really your obsession? So I think, and remember that somebody from domain is going to come and attack you. Are you building moats against that, that, that attack? Because it's going to come, for sure. Now, if you are experienced, my bias is already out there, domain. If you're working out of domain, I would say at least make sure all the other stacking odds in the favor that should be happening because you've been there for 10, 15, 20 years, you're doing. Do, are you starting with a strong co-founding team uh, or, and maybe even a core team? That's the whole point of followership. We have done this org 3.0 uh, where we say that, you know, it takes three versions of an organization to make this work. Well, experienced founders should be able to short circuit that. Org, if you can get org 3.0 in org 1.0, you are going to have a huge advantage. And this is my point about uh, experienced founders. Don't take market risk. Don't take market risk. Uh, don't take business model risk. Uh, leave that for the, for the you know, world changes. Because unless you are still of that risk appetite, I just think stacking more odds uh, in one's favor. And last one would be very, very sharp GTF. Think of the go-to market. Because if you're not taking market risk, GTM is more important than PMF, right? So that's how I would think about it. Thanks, Avi. Really enjoyed this. And I think uh, uh, enough for us to kind of muddle. For us and hopefully, hopefully it, the, the beauty is we are seeing a bunch of really talented. Again, I just want to reiterate 2006, 7, 10, 11, 14, 15, 17, 18, and now 22. Each time, it's a step jump in the quality of the entrepreneurs. And that's the most uh, exciting part. So hopefully, as some of them are thinking through what they want to do, this is helpful. Matrix Moments. You can also follow us on Twitter, LinkedIn and YouTube for more updates.